In the last video, we learned how to form the cumulative distribution function. The cumulative distribution function, capital P, um, is the fraction of your data that has a value equal to or greater than x. So for example, um, there are 70% uh, of my data is 13 or larger, 7 of the 10. And accordingly, where did I draw the 13 point right there, 0 0.7. OK, so in this video, we're going to learn about a closely related plot called the rank frequency distribution or a rank frequency plot. Before I form one of those, I want to note that we can think of this in terms of uh, percentages. We could also think of this in terms of raw numbers. And if I did that, well, then I would just multiply these fractions by my number of data points. And I could label like this. So then, say this point again for 13, I could think that, hey, 70% uh, of my data is 13 or larger. <clears throat> or I could read over here and say there are seven points in my data set that are 13 or larger. So one can do use either sort of fractions or raw numbers. And in practice, one will see both often. But this is a pretty common way of doing it. OK. So now let's think about uh, a rank frequency plot. So here's the idea behind what's known as a rank frequency plot. So again, I'm going to plot x. Sorry, I couldn't find my black pen. Again, I'm going to plot x. Um, but now I'm going to plot it. Uh, not the cumulative distribution, but I'm going to plot its rank. And let me explain what I mean by rank. So here's the example data we've started off with. And uh, there are 10 data points. And in this case, I've already sorted the data for you. So um, right, they're in increasing order. And there are 10 of these total. So I'm going to rank them like this. The one that comes first, I'll call 10. And then 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So these things in orange are the ranks. So now let's plot these ranks against the x value. All right. So the data point 5 has a rank of 10. OK, so 5, I go over here to 10. The data point uh, 7 has a rank of 9. The data point 10, right, these are x's, these are ranks. The data point 10 has a rank of 8. 10 has a rank of 8. 13 has a rank of 7. And let's see. I can keep going like this. What's next? 14. 14 has a rank of 6. 14 has a rank of 6. 18 has a rank of 5. 18 and 5. 21 has a rank of 4. That's my fourth largest data point right there. 28 has a rank of 3. 28. 32 is my second largest data point. 32. And my largest data point is 48, all the way over here. And at this point, um, you may be thinking, wait a minute, this is familiar. Didn't we just do this? And the answer is yes, we did just do this. That uh, the green points, let me line these up, and the orange points 
line up. So the cumulative distribution function and this type of rank plot turn out to be the same thing. So you can sort of see that here. What does this eight mean? Well, this means that there are eight data points that are 10 or larger. And that's exactly what we plotted here. So let's see, for 10, there are eight data points that are 10 or larger. So cumulative distribution functions can also be thought of as plots like this. And as I've mentioned, these are known as rank frequency plots. OK, so a few remarks are in order. First, you might be wondering, why is this called a frequency plot? Um, there's not any frequency on this plot. And indeed, you're right. The reason is, is that um, this plot was first introduced, or perhaps one of the earliest introductions, was in the study of word frequencies. And in that case, what was plotted, the, the data of interest, was word frequencies. So word frequencies were plotted against their ranks. But you can do, uh, you can plot anything against their ranks. Whatever x could be, it could be the population of cities, um, sizes of earthquakes, who knows? It doesn't have to be a frequency. But nevertheless, these are known as rank frequency plots. So that's one remark. Second remark is it's common for the axes in the, here to be inverted, that you could plot the rank down here, and then the data value up here. Um, I prefer to do it this way because it connects more naturally with the idea of a cumulative distribution. But um, you should be aware that often these will be flipped around. I don't think I'll do that at all in this course, but it's something you might see elsewhere. We're interested in power laws where those are going to be showing up as um, a straight line on a log log plot. So if you were to change your axes around, you would change the slope. If the slope was b, change invert the axes, you'd have 1 over b. So it's not, um, it's not uh, difficult to convert at all from one to the other, but it can be confusing if you're sort of not sure what's being plotted where. So that's something to watch out for. OK, and lastly, this ranking business suggests a particularly nice way of making these types of plots. You've got a big pile of data, boom, and you sort it. There, you know, any spreadsheet or stats program, any program will have a nice sorting algorithm. And then one forms ranks, decreasing like this. And one plots one against the other, as I've done here in orange. And again, you could turn this into a line, unwanted, and so on. And then one has the cumulative distribution function, or equival equivalently, the rank frequency plots. And as we'll see, this type of plot, as opposed to a histogram, is a much uh, sort of better device for seeing what's going on with the distribution. And it's what you'll want to work with if you want to um, come up with an estimate of the slope of the potential power law that you're dealing with. So we'll see that in a little bit. But in the next um, set of videos, the next subunit, let's take a look at some data, just a broad survey of data that people think might be distributed according to a power law.